Now that we've created and dynamically populated our Rancher Cluster YAML file, we can use the Rancher Kubernetes engine, or the RKE command, to deploy our cluster. If you wish, you could download RKE onto your local computer. However, considering that we're big on Docker in this tutorial, and that Rancher is all about managing lots of Docker containers, I'm going to opt not to install anything on my host machine unless I absolutely have to. And in this case, I don't have to, as I've found a Dockerized version of the RKE command. So thanks to Ray Nigon for this as a starting point. I'm not too sure if that's his real name or what, but there you go. And what we're going to need to do is because this uses a command rather than an entry point is we're going to need to run the full command in order to be able to extend it. So we want to pass in the dash dash version flag to see what version it's going to run just as a way to prove that this runs, but we will need to do this as a full command. Now this image is only about 10 megabytes, so it shouldn't take too long to download. And when it does, we should see that the version output is 0.1.8. Now as a heads up, this is not the latest version. At the time of recording, that would be 024. So if that bothers you at all, then take a copy of the Docker file and rebuild it as a new image, and then push that up to somewhere like Docker Hub and use your own image instead. So the chances are slim that I'm going to remember this command the next time that I need to run it, or in fact, if I need to share it with a colleague or whatever, someone else on the team, it would help to put this somewhere central and document it. And for that, I'm gonna put it inside a make file. And there should be nothing new to you at this point in terms of what we're doing with the make file entry. Rather than hard coding in the use of the version flag, I'm going to use a command variable and that's going to allow me to pass in whatever command I want at runtime. So I'm just going to tidy this up a touch by indenting the continuation and then let's give this a shot from the command line. So we need to make sure we're in the branch 2 directory and then I can run the make RKE command with the flag of version and we should see that we get the expected output of our version number. So far we've only used the version flag for testing that the RKE command runs as expected, but our actual implementation is going to be a little bit more involved. So I'm going to move our implementation into a shell script, which is going to give us a little bit more flexibility in terms of that implementation. Inside the shell script, I'm going to start off with the usual shebang, and then I'm going to add in my docker run command, and as the RKE command is going to interact with remote servers, we're going to need our SSH key set up. So I'm going to borrow that straight from the Ansible run playbook command. After successfully running the RKE command, we should end up with a file created which is called kubeconfig rancher-cluster. And we want that file to exist on our local disk so that we can retain access to it. Now, as we saw in a previous video, we may encounter some strangeness around this if that file doesn't already exist. So because we're using our shell script, we will be able to ensure that that file exists before we run the command every single time that we run the command. We'll get to that step in a moment, but before I do that, I just want to make sure that I've mounted my Rancher Cluster YAML file inside the resulting container at the path app slash cluster. Now this is because we've named our file rancher-cluster to give us a better understanding of what that file is in the context of our wider environment. But the RKE command doesn't really know about our wider environment, so it's just going to expect our file to be called cluster.yaml. Now we could change this using a bit of extra config, but for simplicity's sake we can just bind this into the resulting container at the right path. Whereas before in our make file we were using the contents of the command variable, I'm going to change this up now and take the first argument passed to the shell script, which we'll set up inside our make file, and use this as the argument to our RKE command. At this point inside our make file, we're no longer calling Docker directly, we're instead going to invoke our shell script, and I am unfortunately about to make a couple of errors here. So neither of them are that bad, but one of them's a typo, we should be calling rke.sh instead of rks.sh. And then instead of using dash config of app rancher cluster.yaml, I could have just left this as app cluster.yaml as that's what we've bound this into the resulting container as. But I guess this does illustrate how you would change the configuration. I just wish I hadn't done this whilst recording the video. But there you go. Immediately we can see the consequence of my first mistake. rks.sh does not exist. Quite a simple fix. Just make sure that you can type properly. So when I go to run this the second time, I'm expecting this to work just fine, but it says that we can't find the expected file. And as just mentioned, we can't find that because I'm looking for the file name as it exists on my local disk rather than what it would exist at inside the resulting container. So this is a bit of a fail on my part and I apologize, 
In my opinion, a better solution to this problem would have been to change the entry inside the make file rather than changing the docker run command. Either way, we get the desired outcome, but I think I prefer the alternative approach there. When running the make RKE command for the third time, things are looking a little bit more successful. RKE is managing to connect to our remote servers and pull down the expected images that are going to be needed to set up our Kubernetes cluster. Now this process takes a few minutes, so I'm gonna fast forward this. It does run in parallel, so it's not all bad. We are still gonna hit on another problem here, and this is specific to the fact that we're using Docker to run RKE, and that's that we've mounted a file inside the container at the app kubeconfig rancher cluster.yaml path. And because that path didn't exist the first time that we ran our script, as we saw in the previous video, Docker is going to assume that we want a directory created on our local disk, and then it's gonna bind that directory inside the resulting container as though it was a file, which is just kind of really messy. And that's why we've switched to using this shell script approach. There's two steps that I'm going to take to clean up this process. The first is to remove the kubeconfig rancher cluster YAML file if it exists already on our machine. That's no problem because the whole point of running the RKE command is that it's going to recreate this file for us. But I'm gonna to touch that file to begin with so that we have a new blank empty file good to go. That should mitigate any problems that we're gonna have with Docker run should that file have not existed. Now as that file name is quite long, I'm going to instead replace it with a variable called kubeconfig. You don't need to do this. Just think it makes the file look a little bit tidier. That file name should never change. So I'm hoping for fourth time lucky here on the make RKE command. I'm gonna clear off that file again. Shouldn't need to do that, but I've had so much issues with Docker by this point that I'm just doing that for my own sanity. And again, I'm gonna fast forward through the installation process as if you're following along yourself, you're gonna to have to sit through this and I don't want to make you sit through it more than you have to. Now the outcome of this process should be a kubeconfig rancher cluster YAML file that's correctly populated. It's quite a messy thing to see from the command line. It's a little bit nicer formatted inside VS Code. And at this point, our Kubernetes cluster should be up and online. And in the next video, we're going to use kubectl along with this kubeconfig rancher cluster YAML file to interact with our cluster for the first time.